In this video, we will cover the use of Photoshop and cover the basics on creating a character which we can then bring into Cell Action. To start with, we are going to need to create a canvas that is large enough to accommodate the needs of our character. The best way to go about this is to have the canvas size shown in pixels. This is important because we will need our character to work in a multitude of different shots and if the resolution of the character is too low, it could come across pixelated in higher resolutions. A good way to gauge how big a canvas needs to be is to consider what the closest type of shot could be. For example, if the closest shot was a close of the head, you would ideally want the head to be clear in 1920 by 1080 full HD. So taking into account not just the head size, but the whole character, I'll size up the canvas accordingly. For this occasion, I'm just going to make my canvas 4000 by 4000 pixels. As you can see, by creating the canvas, we have already got this background layer. We're going to turn this layer into something that is called an align box. The align box is probably one of the most crucial layers for rigging in Cell Action. It enables Cell Action to know exactly where every layer needs to be placed in the workspace. With the align box, when it comes to adding in new elements into the rig at a later date, Cell Action will automatically place them correctly as displayed in the PSD file. The typing of align box is important too and should be typed as you see it here. Otherwise, Cell Action may not pick up on it and will flag this with a warning which I will demonstrate later on. Now one last thing worth mentioning about the Align Box, and this is also why having a slightly larger canvas is beneficial, Cell Action will not recognise anything outside the canvas boundaries, so do ensure you have enough space for all the needs of the character, as changing the size of the canvas after the character has been rigged can cause issues. So now let's get on to building the foundations of our character. I'm just going to demonstrate with a few basic shapes and build up the model as we go. So I'm just going to make a new layer. Layers in Photoshop act as an individual part of the rig in Cell Action. So as we progress through building our rig, more layers will be built up. So now I'm just going to change the colour and start off by drawing a circle for the head. Then I'll just go back over to my Layers column and rename this to Head. As we go, we'll add in more and more levels, each being their own separate element to the rig itself. So for now, I'm just going to start by adding in a body shape, and then I'll add in some arms and legs. For making the arms here, I've simply just drawn a line for the upper part of the arm and then duplicated it, creating the lower arm. To help guide the lower arm into the correct position, I've lowered the opacity of the duplicated arm and then drawn in a circle on the elbow that will act as a guide. I'm also making sure to name each new element as I go in order to not get confused later on. As you can see, I've not deleted the circle guide as it will play a key part when we move into cell action later on. So now just for simplicity, I've duplicated the arm and scaled it up and it'll act now as our leg. Now I just rename them from arm to leg. So now we have the basic arm down, we want to make sure we have everything we need on it and then we can go ahead and duplicate it to make it our other arm. Firstly, going back to that elbow circle I made, as you can see over here, I've renamed the layer to pivot. These pivot layers are helpful in establishing the rotational point of the layers during rigging. In order to help with the rest of the arm rotations, I'm just going to add a pivot layer onto the shoulder and wrist by duplicating the elbow layer. Finally, for this arm, I'm just going to add in another circle here and this will act as the hand for the arm. With the arm now complete, what I want to do is just check this elbow joint is working properly. To do this, I'm just going to go over to the Layers window and select the elbow pivot and then press Ctrl T on the keyboard to activate Transform. Now with the transform up, I can see the centre rotational point of this level. So with this visible, I'm just going to drag down some rulers to line up with that centre point. With this, we have our pivot point marked. So now I'm just going to go back over to the layers window and select the lower arm, hand and wrist pivot layer. Then I'm going to bring up the transform again and move the centre rotate point over the marked cross. Now by rotating the transform box, we can test and see if our elbow is pivoting correctly. Once we are happy that the arm is working correctly, we can go ahead and select all the arm layers in order to duplicate them for the other arm. With the layer duplicated, I'm now just going to flip them and move them over to the correct position. With that, we now have our other arm in place. So now I'm just going to repeat this step with the leg and use the duplicate as the other leg. Finally, we can now see that our figure has taken shape. So now is probably the best time to start talking about tidying up the layers and making sure everything is formally grouped up and named. It is always best to name layers as you go, but as you can see with our layer window, it has started to become quite chaotic. What we need to do is start organising these layers into groups in order to help find what we need with this ever increasing number of layers. So what I'm going to do is just make a few basic groups named by the body part layers that they will contain and then start moving the correct layers into them. 
Then I'm just going to make sure those folders are ordered so that the visuals of the character haven't changed. Layer order is important as however the character is displayed in Photoshop, this will be the initial display setting for the character in cell action. It is important to note that these group folders will not be displayed in cell action. The primary purpose of doing this is to keep the PSD tidy if something needs to be edited later down the rigging process. Cell action will display the layers in a list in layer order so having them grouped up all the correct parts of the rig will be listed together. With the layers all in the correct folders we can now start looking at naming them much easier. Now is the time we must consider our naming conventions for the rig. The names must be clear now as once the layers are brought into cell action what the layers names are in Photoshop will become the element name within the rig. The body and head are rather straightforward but the arms and legs take a slightly different approach. As there are two arms and two legs for this character we need to consider how to name each limb differently. Cell action will bring up a layer warning if multiple layers share the same name so this is why naming your layers clearly is important. One rule of thumb I find is best and can help the animators later on is to not use left, right or L and R in the naming. Rigs can be flipped in animation and if that's the case the L and R or right and left would immediately become backwards. So the best way to get around this is to use alphabetized naming like A, B, C or D and then if you have extra elements like fingers you can go into numericals like 1, 2, 3, 4. So for example here, hand A, finger 1. So now I'm just quickly going through naming my arm layers to arm A and arm B respectively. You may notice when I'm typing out my layer names, I'm starting the name with a prefix of the element's name. For example, the first arm we made has become arm A, and so the upper and lower arms are arm A upper and arm A lower. This will allow us to select the layers in cell action with a select prefix command in the modify pool. I'm also naming all the pivot layers with pivot written in block capitals to make them easier to spot later on. I can then remove them from the rig once I've set the rotational points using them in cell action. Once the naming is all established, you can even go one step further with the groups and place all the limbs into a folder of their own. It's always worth placing additional folder groups into the PSD for elements such as hands, mouths or anything that can have multiple shapes. You can never have enough hand shapes and this just makes it easier to find but also keeps those shapes tidy in one spot. Finally, as just one last housekeeping adjustment, I always layer the folder groups in their alphabetized order with A on top of B. So to finish off this video, I've brought in a rig with a bit more character. This rig has everything we've just talked about plus a little bit more. If we take a look at the head for just a second, you can see that I've added in layers which will become controls for the facial elements. This will allow us to move multiple parts of the face as one. It's a good idea to make a folder for these control layers to be placed in, so you can just turn off the group if they get in the way of making changes to the artwork. Each part of the facial elements have their own layers. Within the face folder, the eyes have their own group. The eyes in particular are built up from several layers consisting of an outline, eye white and pupil, which will allow us to move the pupil separately from the other layers. And since there are multiple shapes, they are numbered to match with the other corresponding shapes. The mouth shapes also have their own folder due to having so many mouth shapes in order to lip sync the character. Now taking a look back at the arms, the arms still have all the necessary pivot markers as do the legs. But if we take a look down here we have our hand shape folder and just like the eyes we have multiple layers making up the hand. Not only do we have our hand shapes but we also have these overlay layers. These are used for grabbing or fist shapes so that the objects or props used in a scene can be inserted between the layers of the rig. With everything now in place we are pretty much ready to bring our character into cell action. But just before we do it's best to do one last check on the PSD to ensure that everything is as it should be. We want to make sure that there are no smart objects, clipping mask or blend modes on the layers and if you come across anything like this smart object make sure you convert it back to a normal layer. It might be a good idea at this point to save off a new version of the PSD keeping the original as a master file. There's always a possibility that you may need to go back to any layer blend modes or smart objects so keeping the master file to hand might save time later on. So now I'm simply just going to finish going through the rest of the layers, there are no duplicate names or any leftover layers and with all this done, once we've saved the PSD we are finally ready to move on to selection and build this character. 